your favorite show. Oh, I thought you meant Twilight Zone. You mean me. I'll right, we'll just give it a minute and then we'll get started. All right, everybody, let's hope we don't get, uh, I don't get flagged here. You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. I'm sure that's why I used to play stuff in the background but I got flagged a couple times so I stopped especially when all you hear is you know ripping plastic wrappers we have a uh, case number 56 Son on the phone. I'm not sure I'm following that one. Box 2107. So it's not a super large base set. I believe it's um, 64 cards. How you doing there, Steve? Uh, yeah, 64 cards, uh, parallels, a couple of different inserts, uh, two autographs, a box, and that's really about it. Oh, yeah, because he used to play video games off in the corner. We booted him, moved his video games up into his room. So now it's just me. I was able to score promos for everybody. I think I didn't count them, but it looks like there's got to be at least 20 in here. So hopefully there's 31. Probably not. Well, everybody will at least get one. Yeah, I forgot about that. Because he had headphones on, he never realized how. I mean, he really he wasn't loud, but he sure wasn't quiet. Right, I'm gonna guess this is one of the stars. Yeah, 
So Twilight Zone stars. Let's see what one of those inserts looks like. I submitted a break for an archive box of this uh, today, this morning. You know, I have to wait till we see one of the parallels. I'm guessing it's got the facsimile autograph on it, like in some of the older releases where they used his work. There's our first autograph. So they're one in six packs, I think, for the parallel. Yeah, one in, no, one in eight packs. Okay. So we're only going to get three in a box. Well, what I usually do is um, I give Houdini like a day, and if it doesn't pop up, I'll shoot him a message. Because <clears throat> sometimes when I when I get busy and and I'm not paying attention to it not going up, um, you know, and he's busy, so you know it could take a week before it shows up. So it's one of the parallels. So it's glossy, has the gold facsimile signature on it. They're numbered out of 150. The only thing I have to check, um, actually not check, but I have to fix. I had the wrong price, so the... I could have sworn it was $1,600, but it's actually $1,500. So... My price is off by, you know, two or three dollars a spot in the good direction. The nice thing about the archive box is that um, Shatner is in it. I would have thought for sure he would have been one of the exclusions. If you look at the, he only has two cards in this. And the nick of time, whoops, the nick of time, which is uh, the more desirable inscription. He didn't sign that many of, and then whichever the other one was that they used, that one he's got a lot of. So I'm guessing that most of the ones in the archive boxes are going to be that one. Again, we should have three of those. We got our Twilight Zone star. Uh, oh, I have the checklist up. Let me just jump over there real quick because this is the first one on the list. I, no, I thought it was. Uh, oh, there he is. No. Uh, oh, yeah, Don Carter. Yeah, because it's got nick of time, quantity range 10 to 25, and then Don Carter 100 to 125. So obviously you're going to be getting a lot of the Don Carter ones. So we should be getting, let's see, one more star, one portrait, and one more parallel. And one more autograph, of course.
So now there are, um, there's our star. Now do they make any, you know what on the box, they don't even say, usually they'll say, you know, two autographs per box. They don't even say that. So there's no guarantee. I, I was wondering if it was going to be, you know, minimum of one inscription autograph per box. Because this first one that we have is not an inscription. It's a, one of the standard full bleeds. I was saying is the the uh, the Ortiz cards they're okay I mean not exactly my cup of tea but I will take these in a heartbeat over the last Twilight Zone where it was you know a little book on every single card okay it is I don't I don't have the sell sheet I only have the checklist up. But with the odds of all the other autographs, I would think you're going to have some boxes with two inscriptions. Because there was, I think, six autographs, not... Uh, let me go back. 35 autograph cards total. So you've got the two duels, which are both limited. So it's probably a guarantee you're going to get one of those duels. And then you've got all the inscriptions... And then I thought it was six non is one, two, three. Yeah, six non inscripted, all limited. So you're gonna get all of them. Hopefully no doubles. That's the one thing that stinks. Yeah, so you figure twelve. So if you take, you know, for the twelve cards, you'll have you know that are uh not the guaranteed inscriptions. So that's six. Uh, plus one duel is seven. You probably get one or two doubles. That's nine. So I would think we'll have. A, there should be a couple boxes that have two inscriptions. I would hope. I guess we'll find out in a little bit. There's autograph number two. Third parallel. And I guess that's our portrait. So there's what the portraits look like. Oh, there it goes. Nice clean design. That's the one thing with Rittenhouse on the whole. Their card designs are, are very well made. And they also stick to the tried and true. Especially for those of you that are completists like collecting the Star Trek or the James Bond autographs, you know, they, they keep, for the most part, you know, the design stays the same. All right. So we had, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. This being, this is the first box. So it's three of the parallels, two of the stars, one portrait. The other inserts are all greater than uh, one a box. You know, I barely opened any ink works, especially not for breaks, but I mean, they were, they weren't out of business yet, but, uh, oh no, you know what? I'm thinking of the wrong company. I'm thinking of Brygent. 
because we I had done a, a Dexter break. not going to look up the scarcity of any of these uh, William Sargent I mean like I said I know that all the full bleed autographs are just limited which is one of the greater I say that about a lot of things and Jim Titus and he has the date April 18th 1963 When I see a lot of, uh, especially the artists on sketch cards, I mean, I don't have a clue how to pronounce some of the names, and you would never hear it anywhere. Five nine seven seven is this box. Yeah, they used to set up at the Philly show, and then they kind of just turned into just distributors. There's our autograph right off. That was actually a pretty nice little set. I forget what seasons it was, but it was a little little box set. So it was a complete base set plus you know you would get uh, some prop cards, some uh, autograph cards. Oh yeah, oh that's good. Most of the sig I would think most of the signatures are going to be in that lower tier, just because they signed so many different versions. There's one of the portrait cards. Now you're going to make me check with the autographs. Uh, yeah, most of, most of them are. Uh, Barbara Barry, she signed a lot. Uh, yeah, I know that's that's the worst part when you start looking at the. Uh, I'll let you guys do that. So, if you want to keep that checklist up, so that way you'll know as we go through. I never understood how some people they could rip through a case like nobody's business. Yeah, I mean, they'll. I mean, I'm. If I'm lucky, you know, it's an hour and ten, hour and fifteen minutes. Usually, it's like an hour and a half. Twilight Zone Star. All 
And out of the, those of you that are watching right now live, how many were interested in the Star Wars Authentics break? That was uh, the one that was up there originally was the 11 by 14s. Yeah, the only thing I need to, to rush it for is so that I don't get done so late because by the time I get home from work and, you know, eat dinner and then get, get to this, you know, I'm done doing a break. It's 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And it's usually too late for me to scan the card, so I can't do that till the next day. Don't like to slow it down if I can avoid it. That's one of the parallels. But in my uh, my iFish73 thread on Blowout, I had posted up a question about the 8x10 Star Wars Authentics. Since the 11 by 14 isn't going to fill, and a few people said that they would take 8x10s. Now, they have both the 2019 and the 2020. But the price difference is like six hundred dollars, so it's it's like a fifty dollar a spot difference in price. And I didn't know if the two thousand nineteen the ratio of what you were getting out of there was that much better to warrant the extra cost, because at least in the two thousand twenty they have uh, a bunch of the. Mandalorian signers. All right, Hall of Fame. These are numbered out of 150. Chorus Leachman, so that's good. Now, the, bi <clears throat> excuse me, the biggest difference that I saw was um, the 2020, excuse me one second. The 2020 had, um, had the Mandalorian and I think they also had some of the the crappier, you know, uh, voice actors. They might even have video games. But the the price of the case, it's I think it's eleven fifty for the two thousand twenty and seventeen fifty for the two thousand nineteen. But I was having trouble trying. I was just trying to find case breaks to see, and um, I I, I was able. To, I found a 2020 case break. I want to say Steel City was doing it, but the the audio was so quiet I couldn't hear it. And looking at what they pulled, there was there was two Boyegas, a Jones. Um, Somebody from a video game, but I couldn't even see a signature on the on it, and I couldn't hear him who he said. So I'm guessing we wouldn't know who it is anyway. Oh, he got a uh, Esposito and Nolte. I remember those. This here is two Boyega. Sarah Michelle Geller was one. Um, somebody I, I didn't recognize the name. It was like a an X-wing pilot. Well, like I said, and then some video game person. There's our stars. You know. Oh, never mind. It wasn't who I thought it was. R correct, Nick, in the 2020 version.
Yeah, so we got two inscriptions. So that's good. That's what I was hoping to see. I'm sure some of the, the even though it's only six of them, but the full bleed, the full bleed autographs, I'm going to guess we're going to get a double in there somewhere. And one of the parallels. I know it kind of stinks watching me do this, but it save it's honestly saves me so much time while I have just an individual box worth stack here instead of me throwing a case worth of wrappers and having to count them all out. Again, one of those little things. I always, you know, this is this is the way I would want to get them. So if you pick the wrappers, if you're into getting the reward cards, you're gonna get each one is a each little bundle is a box worth. All right, John Aston, Charlie. Yeah, the picture was definitely falling water. I, I mean, that's it. Almost, it almost looked like a little poster. Bonnie Beecher, take me away. And the the dual signers actually were pretty weak. You know, they had a couple of the you know better ones, but the 2019 dual signers, at least the list that I found, they were all really strong. All right, Steve, you have a uh, fun at work. And no, I will not be breaking turtles tonight. I'll do that tomorrow night. I do. I mean, I have the case. I just, uh, if I get this, I want to get these scanned tonight and get it out of the way. I'm actually really getting, <laughs> uh, I'm, I don't have much table space. I'll be honest with you, I didn't know John Aston was still alive. Unless that's one of those ones, uh, like, um, uh, God, who was in the last Twilight Zone set who had passed away who had a lot of autographs in there? Uh, drawing a blank on his name. That was kind of like the, the running joke with uh, Abe Vigoda. Everybody thought that he was dead forever and he, he was still alive. Because he, he looks like he was 80, you know, when he wasn't. That he was. He was also 
Oh, let's see if I'm going to get this right or not. Did you ever watch Night Court when that was on TV? I think he played Harry Anderson's dad on Night Court. I know he was on the show. I'm just trying to remember if, if he was his dad or not. It's one of the parallels. some more room here. And stars of Twilight Zone. Our second autograph. Parallel. Let's keep on. I think all we have left now is a portrait, unless there's one of the other. Uh... Yep, there's our portrait. I think this is only the second Twilight Zone product I've opened. The one last year and then this one. The numbering on the cards, there was um, there was Ortiz style cards in the in the last one, but it wasn't you know the base set. So I guess these are a continuation of. Another set, it's got E154, J155, for instance, on the back, so they're dual numbered. All right, Buddy Joe Hooker? Yep. All 
And our inscription is Jacqueline Scott. She wrote hugs. Kind of like how she made her J go into the H of hugs. Six oh two. How are you doing tonight, Brian? I would love to. My biggest gripe, though, is I think the price of the product is out of touch right now. I think, we, I think we need it to go back down. Hobby cases of season eight are up to 1050. And I just, I, I don't see where the, like that there was some huge value that, there's our first autograph, that would cause the, the price to go up. Did they put inflections back down? I know uh, international edition eight was up to like 23 or 2400. And there's our other, all right, we got both of our autographs already. And then the archive boxes are up to 2,800. That I definitely saw. I really wanted to keep going on the archive boxes because the, uh, I'm still looking to get one of the good bronze inscriptions. Yeah, I mean, if the prices come back down, I will definitely give it a shot. Here's our portrait. Star Trek Beyond is by far my favorite Star... Well, no. Inflections was fun. But Star Trek Beyond, in general, is one of my favorite products to open. I agree with you. Usually on that one, we wait because the price of a case will... Usually they'll put it down to 600 for a while, and then we would break a box or two. They were doing archive boxes i think for a thousand and an archive box it is it is a no-brainer for that the, the level of you know the actors that you're getting in that I know uh, Mason, the pick 88, I think he's still missing. Which one is the really rare relic? Was it Pike's chair? I think he's missing that one card to have a total master set.
Really? You got a Jamie inscription in one box. Which inscription did you get? He's the second hardest pull in the product. Uh, see now, we got that one. We pulled that inscription in the uh, the first breaks that we did at release. Yeah, it's like, can you lend me a hand? Yeah, I think the only thing I haven't pulled out of that was a Sean Bean. His are really hard to pull. second when I, I'll grab a pen I'll make myself a note to I'll look up the inflections and the beyond I think with the price of the hobby cases up to 1050 I, I would wait for them to come down a little bit but yeah I would do beyond again in a heartbeat Gregory Irvin, and Orson Bean. Hi. That was the thing with Star Trek inflections is that there were so many good names in there, even though the actual, like, if you were to check like resale or eBay value, you know, it might not have been quite as big, but just to be able to pull a lot of names that you knew, it just made you really feel like you were getting your money's worth out of it. And it was, that was a lot of fun to open. I was disappointed though in that one. We never, um, never pulled the the con con duel. I think that's the only card that I, I didn't pull out of that. Four zero one three. Rittenhouse needs to make it, you know, redo their wrapper so that it's just a little, like a coupon that you would, you know, cut out of the wrapper. So I don't have to save this whole wrapper. I mean, you do that, you don't have to worry about all this trash, saving the, wrap, the whole wrapper.
I'd say I have two problems with Rittenhouse. One is that, and the second is the big gold stickers that they put on their exclusives. It's just way too big. It's a giant seal. They need to streamline that. Well, Brian, that's the one thing I keep telling everybody. If you all go join the Facebook group, look, I'm I'm loyal to Blowout. I, I always will be. You know, that's where we get most of our stuff and, you know, give us a forum that we're able to do all these breaks on. But once in a while, there's stuff that just isn't available from them so you got we got to get it somewhere else yeah I hope they run out of those gold stickers someday and I think that the just the small clear ones that when you peel them off they leave that you know like void kind of thing behind just to kind of cover themselves because the gold sticker doesn't even stay stuck on the top loader that's just like over on Facebook the bombshells break that we're trying to fill we were having fun we ran through two rounds of series two and then I'm guessing that they don't have much left so the series two they doubled the price so no no more of that so now David Adams has series three for five hundred dollars so we could do an even cheaper break over on Facebook and I'm just skipping or flipping which ones I do because the autographs seem to be in the bottom of the row so far so I'll try and save them for the last But the quality, I mean, honestly, I think the quality of three, there's one of the portraits, was actually a little bit better than the quality on two. Now, Bombshells one, sketch quality was really nice. The base and inserts, I thought, were not good-looking cards at all. I know most people don't care about the base and inserts as much. First autograph. It's a full bleed. how much more Star Trek inflections is out there and I'm talking about cases not boxes just felt like a, a lot of it was open Because the thing about Star Trek inflections is, especially now, that unopened cases, I would think that they're going to start going up in value. There's 
autograph number two. Now you asked Brian. You had asked about Beyond. Is is Beyond um, at seven hundred, or is it a little bit less? Jump to the checklist here. I'm just curious. Uh, boy, she described a lot. Holy cow. Yeah, that's what I thought. Unless I'm missing it, I'm checking this again. This. Oh, never mind. There it is. I didn't see it on the list. Okay, so we'll start with Sherry Lee Burnath. And Ann Jillian, sending good thoughts. Is that focus? There we go. Blowout doesn't have any Star Trek Beyond? Or are you talking about Star Trek Inflections? Here's our case topper. Is there more than one case topper? That's 640, that's not terrible. Yeah, just the one. When we were doing, I'd have to look it up. I know they had put them on sale. I think we did a bunch, they were at 500, and then they, they kind of bounce up and down. But anything 600 and below, I know we were running breaks. And then when they would get up to 700, we'd stop doing breaks. I do agree with you though. I feel like there's there's less non-sport breaks right now. I mean, we were going crazy with the Stellar when they were cheap. But I think with the all the shutdowns that happened, you know, stuff got pushed back. I mean, I know Outlander season 4, which that case is not looking good on that one.
Never watched it. I, I don't. Uh, is that on Netflix? I don't have Netflix. There's our autograph. Yeah, I mean, it seemed to be uh, Hester filled two cases pretty quickly, so I would think that that's a, a decent indication. Parallel. I know the end of the year is going to be really busy for Star Wars. I'm not submitting any of those breaks yet just because they're so far away. With Masterworks, Mandalorian, uh, Holocron, Chrome Perspectives. And Masterworks. Clemente keeps asking me to, if I'm going to do a break of that, I guess I'll submit one just for, just for the fun of it and see what happens. But, you know, at $8,000 MSRP, I don't, uh, I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of traction. Oh, yeah, Mandalorian is. I guess the thing we'll have to look for is if the, um, you know, what the signer list is going to look like. If it's not a huge signer list, then, you know, even if it's mass, mass produced. Thank you. The other good thing about the new Stellar is that when it does drop, and I don't mean drop in price, I mean release drop, then what's left of the 19, I would think, would come down. Yeah, I saw that preview. Now, somebody had posted that he was supposed to, there's a portrait, somebody had posted he was supposed to be doing a signing with, uh, with Authentics, I think. I never heard anything one way or the other for him on, like, why didn't he sign? Did he not sign because he hates to sign? He didn't know. He was too busy. Is he like uh, Davos who doesn't want to sign because people then resell his signature? I mean, in general, I mean, these people, they, they have to, they have to want to sign. And I'm, and I mean that they're not doing it for the money.
And then some of them they'll do it and the money gets donated, which is good. Because wasn't that one of the problems with Hamill? They wanted to charge more than he wanted them to charge at the um, uh, at the what do you call it? Why can't I think of the the big Star Wars convention? Because he had like an assistant going around handing out autographs for free. So I mean that's that's a straight slap in the face to the show promoters. Derek Lewis, Anthony Call. Oh, there it goes. You know what else is coming out? Um, Discovery Season 2, Dana Dillaway uh, as Karen Rogers O Grandma. Parallel. It's like how some people, when they sign autographs, they'll only inscribe them. That way, they're not not as resellable. Or excuse me, personalized. We have not hit one of the acetate cards yet. Because it was, I thought it was two of the acetate cards. Two acetate portfolio prints. It was one in 96. Uh, are one of these different than the other? I didn't notice. No, they're all numbered the same. 
And then that's the Hall of Fame, which that's two in a, in a case. Yeah, so we haven't seen an acetate yet, and we haven't, as far as I know, I haven't seen a portfolio print. But uh, what do they look like? You know what? I bet you I would I would have skipped right past them now that I see what they are. I'm not going to do it now, but I'll I'll go through them and and find them. I would I would have just thought that they were part of the base set. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. There's one of the parallels. And that one's to serve man, one of the more famous lines. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll just run through the boxes just looking at the backs of the cards. I'm sure that's different enough that it'll uh, it'll stand out. There's our first autograph. Our second autograph. Nick, are you a monthly subscriber to the Autograph of the Month Club? I don't know. I, never, I don't know. For some reason, I never got into 8x10s. I like looking and I, I like trying to guess when he drops those hints. I mean, never in a million years would I have figured out Nick Stahl. Uh, I know me personally, I would have much rather... Oh, okay. I would have much rather seen... Uh, because I know sometimes he'll have different variations of the of what's being signed, but uh, one from Carnival instead, I would have I would have liked that over Terminator. There's a star. But you know what? I'm not an autograph collector in general. There's the other star. So that's probably what it is.
I guess I'm so specific in what I uh, in what I collect. All right, two inscriptions. David Ellington, uh, H.M. Wenat. Uh, Oh, H.M. Why not is his real name. I'm sorry. I didn't, I missed the quotes. So David Ellington. And Jack Ging. Car buyer. Let's the wrapper away. First autograph. So have either of you been watching the new season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I just thought it since you just mentioned about missing out on that, well... Stars. And there's the other stars. That was quick. Now that I'm actually looking for the portfolio prints cards, I'm never going to find one.
parallel. Portrait. I always wondered, was Outer Limits just not nearly as popular? I mean, I remember watching that as well. I couldn't tell you if there was any any uh, big actors in it, and if it could, you know make a set and actually have people buy it. Well, there's our acetate. Autograph number two. All right, we'll start with the acetate card. Nice. I like it. It says, I am the night, color me black. And it definitely reads a little bit easier uh, when you have it in hand. All right, full bleed, Derek Lewis. That's five of the six full bleed autographs. Sherry Jackson, I'm a fickle woman. Yeah, no, they, they definitely do a good job in general on their cards. Boy, this is taking forever. Four boxes to go. Excuse 
Now I believe in the I think in the archive box because the the Hall of Fame cards are numbered. I know that the parallels there's none of those in the archive box. I feel like one of these other inserts. I, I can't. I'd have to look at the cell sheet. I don't remember. I know it says like the the cut booklets aren't in them, but that's kind of obvious. Autograph. I wonder how the licensing works for Twilight Zone. I don't have uh, CBS All Access, so I have never seen the the new version, the uh, Jordan Peele one. I wonder if Rittenhouse has any rights to that. I mean, they also do Star Trek Discovery, and that's on All Access. Maybe they'll do a Picard set. Well, I know they pretty much had all of the uh, Next Generation people on it. I know I saw... Oh, I saw Riker, saw Data. They actually replayed an interview with Patrick Stewart on NPR earlier this week. Stars. I would think they'd have to have 
Gates McFadden in there. I mean, her and Picard, they kind of had this uh, tension between them. But when it comes to guests, I still, I am so curious if Topps is going to take any effort to try and get any of the guest stars from Mandalorian. I mean, there were so many of them. Just like with Twilight Zone there, I would think the same thing. If they... Um, when they did on HBO, Tales from the Crypt, they always got, you know, pretty decent actors to do those shows. So I would think something like, you know, a new Twilight Zone on, you know, one of the subscription services would probably draw people to do, you know, an episode or two. All right, Pamela Austin. Yeah, well, he had already signed for Upper Deck, so, you know, it would make sense that he would sign. And Reed Morgan, lefty. Well, I'll be 100% honest with you, Steve. I, I don't know. I mean, we got... Uh, well, I think you were still around when we got the Sean Astin. I mean, at least I knew who he was. I know who Ann Jillian is. I mean, look, I, I definitely watched, <laughs> you know, in reruns, not, not when it was on the first time. I definitely watched Twilight Zone, but except for the... The heavy hitters, you know, like Shatner or Burgess Meredith, you know, people like that. Very few of these people, I know who they are. We did pull one of the duels. I mean, the duels are limited, so, you know, I was fully expecting to get one. Um, we got one of our acetates. Got the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame is nice. Got Cloris Leachman. The portraits are real nice looking. The portfolio portraits. Um, because they look so much like the base cards, I forgot to look for them. So I got to go back. We should have three of them. There's our autograph. No, no, none of those. I mean, we still have uh, five more shots for the autographs. We have two and a half boxes to go. Wow. 
Twilight Stars. And those two booklets, by the way, I'm going to guess 10 of each of them. And that's on the high side. Star. Draw the parallels. I mean, 6,500 boxes, so we're looking at, what's that, 550 pieces? There's our portrait. So depending on how many, you know, just taking a guess as to how many of those they have, those booklets. Uh, there's a Hall of Fame. Rod Taylor, number 35 of 150. <laughs> I wish I knew, George. Autograph number two. Two inscriptions.
Home stretch. Two more boxes. Oh, I forgot to show the artists. Sorry. All right, Mary Badham and Sport, the Bewitching Pool. So you didn't opt to make uh, separate accounts, or are you going for one of the big cards? Barbara Barry, Twilight Zone. And I can't remember who it is. Somebody was saving up points. They wanted to get the, was it the Eric Roberts autograph? I've always been curious. At the bottom of the rewards catalog, they have a couple of sketches. And when they still had the Marvel or even their half a Marvel license, there was um, sketches, Marvel sketches you could have gotten in the rewards program. Well, I know it's not crazy money, but um, when I had a lot of points in my account that I wasn't using anything remotely good, like the Twin Peaks, the Last Twilight Zone, um, something else, when they put that reward card out, I I would get it right away. I'd be the first one to just throw it up on eBay. You know, again, not making crazy money, but you know, you get forty, fifty dollars for it if you're one of the first. Oh, so I thought they didn't have a picture of it. Am I wrong? But there's more than one sketch. There was two or three of them. Oh, okay. I'm surprised. I, again, I don't remember which what's what, but I, one of, wasn't one of them Warren Martinek? I mean, he does really good work. Portrait. Oh, that's a double. How many portrait cards are in the set? Okay, well that would make sense. It also means that there was another double, I just didn't catch it. Static cling. Stay there. I wonder what they did with all the rewards cards that they probably still had laying around from. Um, like Marvel and stuff. Any licenses that they don't have anymore. Oh, 
autograph. I didn't even realize he was in here. That's what happens when the autograph list is in an alphabetical order. different spots in the box. Usually they've always they've been on the bottom and most of the time. Well, for me personally, I, I get all the Game of Thrones to fill in my gaps. I have not gotten the season eight yet. I have to. I have the points. I just uh, been too lazy to order it. Star. And the other star. Okay. Okay, we start with Anthony Call Helmsman. And George Takei, Arthur Takamori. I can't imagine. Yeah, what else do they have? Yes, I agree. 
to K is OK. As he says himself. Oh. Hello, Mia. That's my daughter, by the way. You never came down and cut the boxes, Mia. She's also my uh, my slave. There's our autograph. All right, we got one last shot at a Shatner. You know, you're a little late to the party, George. Um, Brian, a little ways back, was asking if we could do a break of Star Trek Beyond. Oh boy. Hello, Maddie. <laughs> now, you don't have to say sorry, Mia. I would think you guys would be uh, doing your own personal FaceTime or whatnot. Stars. Okay, you saw that. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the 2020 for the uh, Authentics. So we got the... Um, Twilight Zone Archive box, which I submitted today. We'll do 2020 Authentics, Star Trek Beyond... And I'll see what the price of uh, inflections is. Here's our other acetate card. Here we get David Ellington, the Howling Man. That's good. I I made the uh, I had to make me my order. I already reserved that case. Good. The more subscribers, the better. I think I need a thousand subscribers. Well, uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, I've got the wrong price. I thought that the archive box was um, sixteen hundred, but it's actually fifteen hundred. So. 
uh, my price is a little high I have to adjust it so it should come down there's a portrait roughly you know two dollars because I, I think I had 40 spots and it was 46 44 so like so it should be somewhere in the area of like 44 42 for the spot prices All right, here's <laughs> here's one of the portfolio cards. Like I said, I knew what to look for after I was eight boxes in. All right, so now I only have to find two more in the first eight, seven, eight boxes. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to um, like I'll work the break backwards by uh, by spot price. I like that whole 3129. Even numbers are good. And autograph number two. All right, no Shatners. That was a long shot. If you add up his two together, you know, he's only one in every what five cases Okay, so now that is it for our case. I didn't show you the last two autographs yet. And then we'll do a quick recap. Then I have to find the other two portfolio prints. Ron Masick, uh, one hand. And uh, Huh, this is interesting. So this one here, uh, congratulations, this limited edition card has been personally signed by Tim Stafford slash Jeffrey Byron as Jeb Sherwood. So Tim Stafford signed it. I don't know. I mean, I know when they have, you know, babies or toddlers, they usually do the thing where they get twins. So I don't know if some of these cards are signed by Jeffrey Byron or, or what the deal is with that. Okay, so that was those last two. Quick recap. So we got one duel, which was Derek Lewis, Anthony Call. We got all six of the full bleeds. Pamela Austin, Derek Lewis, Shari Lee. Burnath, Gregory Irvin, Buddy Joe Hooker, William Sargent. And then the Twilight Zone style, George Decay. Let me do it easier to read this way. Jim Titus, John Aston, 
Bonnie Beecher, Jacqueline Scott, Orson Bean, Ann Jillian, Dana Dillaway, H.M. Wynat, Jack Ging, Sherry Jackson, Reed Morgan, Mary Badham, Barbara Barry, Anthony Call. And that will do it. I'll get these scanned as soon as I can. I got to go fishing to find the other portfolio prints. I'll get it. Like I said, I'll get everything scanned and listed as quickly as I can. Um, this took way, way longer than I thought. I'm not sure. I guess I was going super slow. I don't know. I didn't feel like it, but holy cow, two hours. Um, join the Facebook group, I Fish 73 Non Sport Group Breaks. And, uh, excuse me. Um, going to submit Star Trek Beyond. Going to submit, I guess, inflections. I'll check if the price is around 2000 We can give it a shot. And, um, Still kind of feeling out, you know, some of the other breaks. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Some people don't like being on Facebook. I will tell you that I, the only account I have on Facebook is this one that I do the card stuff on. I don't like being on Facebook, but a lot of people like the groups. So, and it seemed to be the easiest way to get some like people together. So, uh, yeah, the 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 hap the uh, the hopper the hopper. I completely lost my train of thought. I'm sorry, but whatever. Um, with the Facebook thing, what I was saying was that I don't even use it. I just made this one account that to make to do the group to do the card stuff, you know, just to get some people together, and. That's really about it. So go check out my breaks on Facebook if you uh, want to join. I fish 73 nice sport group breaks and check out the stuff over on Blowout. And I'll get to those other breaks as soon as I can. So thanks for watching and 